Look at me all dressed up in my trench coat. If I'm wearing a trench coat, I'm automatically dressed up, right? No matter what else I'm wearing. Clearly, yes. I went to go have my first coffee date of the day and I missed his message saying that he was sick. And now my second like lunch date today has COVID. So that is canceled as well, meaning uh, my day of having three to four meetings has gone down to two. So I'm gonna be meeting with my mom in another hour or two to start going through my basic financials and business model planning and whatnot. And if you're saying, Carolyn, why are you going to your mother for this? Is because she's a finance, financial professional who's also worked in real estate for decades. So very handy to have her help me with my little real estate startup. But the other thing I did was just be a total stereotypical young millennial. And I got a book, this book. Is this a good book to read while I'm on my way to go see my mother? I am not sure. But I've heard a lot of great things about this book by Jeanette McCurdy, who you may remember from iCarly. It's called I'm Glad My Mom Died. And uh, I'm just gonna be like the rest of the internet and also read this book. My gosh, today has been non-stop. I met with my mom to figure out all of my financial stuff and also just to drill down more solid business models as she <laughs> thought they needed to be better and she is right. So we're working on that, which was exciting. And then I had a two hour call with a cousin-in-law of mine all about real estate and his experiences. And oh my gosh, we had a blast. We were supposed to talk for 45 minutes. We talked for two hours and then I was like, all right, farewell and hung up. And then he called me to tell me more things. I'm just like, I love it. I told him, call me anytime. <laughs> so just working out like for more things that we can do to help realtors uh, when this app comes out. And uh, yeah, just how can we make this better basically? I'm gonna film this while I still have time. Got a lot of work done today. Maybe not as much as I would like to, but that seems to be a theme of every day. I think every day I'm not gonna finish all of the work I wanna do. And I think that is probably okay. But tonight I went over to Twin Ignition for a beta party. They have uh, parties on Tuesdays once a month. So went to that, there was some cake and I got to talk to some great friends of mine. And one of them, is a big corporate guy, super, super nice. And he is really invested in trying to help entrepreneurs in the community. And he started asking me about why Minnesota, how do I think Minnesota's startup scene compares to New York's or Silicon Valley, especially since I have experience in that and also have experience in, you know, comedy and Hollywood. You know, we talked about the basics, like A, getting meetings with people is substantially easier. People don't always know how to help you. <laughs> But if you can give them clear directions, they will help you. Making contacts, getting meetings is drastically easier. People are incredibly kind and helpful and generous, which is awesome. But also just things feel a little bit more possible here. I mean, in New York, there is a feeling like anything is possible, you know, just like get out there and do it. But it's also so expensive and so hard and people can be cold and, you know, very focused on themselves or on a small circle and there's less generosity. I mean, there is a lot of generosity, right? Like somebody falls on the tracks of the subway, five people are gonna go rescue them, right? Like New Yorkers are great in a crisis, but on just an average day, sometimes it can be really hard. And if you are trying to build a startup and exist in the city, it's just really, really difficult. I told him about how things just feel more possible here because A, it's cheaper. It's not even that much cheaper, but it is that much more, you know, cost friendly. And because the kindness that you can receive and the types of resources are that much better. And for us, when it came to moving to Minnesota, a lot of it was like the community. Yeah, thinking about 
how this weekend I was able to just go on adventures hiking in these massive parks like the size of New York City within the Twin Cities. You know, we went to Minnehaha Falls and the dog park there and explored the rivers converging there and the Mississippi and the Minnesota rivers converge in that park and it's pretty spectacular and beautiful. Minnehaha Falls obviously are gorgeous. And then being able to drive up north and just spend time with family and go to a pumpkin patch. There's just so many wonderful things about being here and I'm really glad I did it. Am I going to stay in Minnesota forever? I don't know. But for right now, where I'm trying to build something and build it well, sometimes I'm like, ah oh, man, it would be great to be in New York right now. It'd be great to be in Silicon Valley right now or even like Austin or something. But I think the community here is just so kind and I think it's a good place to start when you're just trying to figure it out. Can I scale it? I don't know. That's actually my biggest question is how big can I get a startup to be if I'm here? Can I get it to be as big as a startup in New York? Or, you know, am I gonna be limited in some way? One thing that I've been talking to my engineer about, am I operating on New York rules because I was in New York for years or am I operating on Minnesota rules? How much funding can I get? How much scale can I expect? How many investors? All that kind of stuff. I don't know. As somebody who has been in so many, lived in so many different places, and uh, doesn't feel a strong identity to anyone in particular. I'm not sure, but I'm just gonna try. I'm gonna see, and I'm really happy to be here now and uh, rock it out rolling. Good morning all. So I had a great time at Beta last night. And one of the things I didn't talk about was how I ran into Moo again. Moo is one of my founder friends here in Minneapolis. And we've just been like total buds. He's always giving me advice and like coaching me. <laughs> so like when I got to the Beta event, he was like, Carolyn, what are you gonna do next week? It's gonna be game changing. <laughs> so I'm trying to just do all the things I said I was going to do when I talked to him. So that includes building a pitch deck, upgrading my company from an LLC to a C core. Probably I need to talk to like one or two other people. And then I think there was one other thing I've completely forgotten, but what are the big things that I can do that will make a big difference very quickly? So I worked a lot on my pitch deck last night. I think it's looking a lot better. I'm gonna try to work on it more today and just get a new rough draft out there. And then Mike, our engineer is fussing with branding right now, which is great actually, because I'm just so, all of our branding looks just like Bumble which isn't the worst thing in the world, but I kind of, I, I want something, you know, the app's called Home Surfing. I'm trying to do something to do with real estate, but also like fun and sunny and warm and maybe a little edgy and weird because we're a little edgy and weird. So yeah, big day today, hoping to just get as many big things done. And I think to break things down in the steps and execute on them, the better I'm going to feel and the less like unproductive. I think I'm maybe spending too much time trying to get everything perfect rather than just getting it done. And that always makes me feel better anyways, to just get stuff done. So yeah, we're rocking here. <laughs> Sasha, what are you doing? Man, I seem to be pet sitting all of the pets. This is Rocky. He is a good boy, ahoy. And we're going on a W-A-L-K. That's so exciting. Yeah, everybody wants me to pet sit. I mean, I can't blame them. I am off. Small meetings are businesses and storage. Those you know me, you know that I've been doing this a long time. Those of you that don't understand that my, I wake up every single morning to try and make the world a better place by helping startups uh, grow, build, and, and, and do amazing things. Is there a formula that kind of makes sense in terms of how to structure that ask or that? Ideally, you guys, you want to get to the point where you know your target audience inside and out. You don't need a formula. You can just literally write from the heart, and somebody is going to recognize how authentic and real that message is, and they're going to go, boy, I'm really connected to this. Hey guys, it's been a really busy last two days. Yesterday, I spent all day being out and about and working in pretty places, 
which was super fun. And today I went to the gym first thing this morning and so I'm hyped up as heck. I should probably just do this every day. I should probably go to the gym every day. In the mornings, I should say. I, I normally go in the evenings and like I'm hyped up then, but I'm like electric in the morning when I work out. So I guess I should do that. But right now, Mike and I are going back and forth on, you know, what should the brand be? What should the design be for home surfing? And he sent over a few designs, which really like pretty, but they're also like very fall muted. He came up with like these guys, which like, you know, they're just a little too muted. I also felt like they were very masculine and maybe that was why I wasn't jamming with them. And then we got this one, which is like a little bit more yellow. This is the one I said I liked, but I mostly like the colors that are in the typeface right there. He's got two colors in there, which is cool. And we've got this one, which again, has super muted colors. I gave him the prompt of like California sunset and those might be the accurate colors for California sunset, but I want it to be a bit explosive, like my painting. <laughs> Just a little bit explosive. It's just interesting when you talk about like branding and how you want your brand to be communicated. I love that kind of stuff. I love playing with colors and storytelling. I kind of really want to lean into just like going a little nutso on this California stuff. I do think it would be really funny to like be in an office in Minneapolis and have the whole place just look like a surf lounge. <laughs> In Hawaii, you know, just like California retro, cool. Like what the heck is going on here? It's like negative 30 degrees outside. Okay, so it's been a busy day, but I just got off the phone with one of my dear, dear friends in New York, Eric, who's a realtor there. And we had a really long conversation just talking about the app and the potential and the problems and what I'm thinking of focusing on and whether he thought that was a good idea or not. And yeah, just like, feeling really rock solid. I'm feeling really confident right now. Maybe I'm too confident for my own good. Maybe this is a foolish thing for me to um, be. I think we found a niche that's gonna make a lot of sense. Obviously I need to do more validation to prove that for sure. But we've basically decided that when it comes to working with realtors, we think that our product, you know, it's mostly for consumers. It's a really fun way to find homes. But we think that like the biggest thing that we can do is help new realtors who need leads, who are looking for ways to get started, who are trying to find opportunities to grow and build their businesses. If we can help them get their very first leads and help them get their foot in the door and get them to launch successfully, then that is something that is a really big problem right now. 87% of new realtors quit within the first four years. 87%, that's like nearly a 90% failure rate. It's, that's wild. If we are able to move the needle there at all, I think that is something that is worth focusing on. I think that is something that could be absolutely game changing for the industry. I think we have something that could really help with that. So I'm really excited. Yeah, clearly I need to work out in the mornings more because I'm just happy for the whole day. Bye! Good morning, everybody. It is another lovely morning here in Minnesota. Wait, wait, what's that? What's that? Snow! Minnesota had a whoopsie daisy this morning. Is it Halloween yet? No. Is it snow time? Yes, it is. apparently has been blurred in Targets, so I'm trying to see if I can find her in this Target. Rita Bunatal, um, model and entrepreneur and just goddess of all time. Love it. Oh, this is fun. 
Is it a story? Yeah. Looks like a story. Oh, it's the first movie, isn't it? Yeah, I'm really hoping that we find her there. Has, well, no, just like, this is a smaller target. Do you think she's gonna be here today? I don't know. Where's Wingo? Best time of the year. Halloween! Look at that. Look at that. Nope. 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 Where's Rita? It's a lot of empty billboard spots like there and like all on that wall. So I'm worried that Rita's not gonna be here. Nope. Not over there. Where are you, Rita? Okay. So I just talked to somebody who works here and they said that they haven't updated the posters here in like years. <laughs> so Rita's not here. But we're gonna try Minnetonka and like Minneapolis later. I totally forgot to mention that we were pressing with more colors, which is very exciting. And my friend from Buncha, Angie, volunteered to help with colors. And so here's some of the stuff we were playing with. So she came up with all these palettes, like, you know, like these and stuff, which, you know, some of them I liked and some of them I didn't like. And then, like, she went over some of these, which were super fun. These ones, and this is like a little different. And so we were fussing with them and stuff. I'm like, look. Uh, Angie specifically said, don't use every color all the time because then it just looks like a rainbow app. But these are kind of like the colors we're playing around with. They look so good. I do like the brighter stuff. I love this. Okay, I've been working on the deck all morning and afternoon. And oh my God, look at this. I'm not going to show you all of it or I'm gonna go through it really quickly, but it's so pretty. Got new brand colors, and they're so pretty, look how pretty, oh my god, it's not done yet, I got all these pretty, what? But yeah, I'm pumped. My buddy is also here for the naps. What a cat, what a cat. <laughs>